Okay. Yeah, and um, Jeff put together, he communicated that he put together this updated depiction in the content of what he just handed out is not any different than the content of the map that we were just going over. It's just in the next depiction to show where it was proposed to occur. And so it's uh, suggested that um, this would be seen as uh, a minor uh, subdivision um, and a type two seeker. Um, there's very few stock comments associated with this. Um, we didn't receive any, um, when I'm relating to the stock report, we didn't receive any international comments related to it. Um, okay. And um, I think um, the the minor staff comment that we did have other than standard procedures um, is regarding the announcement of setbacks in specific information. We will see staff comment with like the one but on your set on and three for the five 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 Placement of improvements are accurately reflected in terms of people for comment number four and comment number five. Um, and then um, comment number six is the uh, recommendation of the application of the of the building inspector regarding the phase of the status of all the efficient front and side yard setbacks and permit one space for all alternative um, achieve. For achieving an area of variance for determination of necessary. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, I did have a conversation with the building inspector's office after this comment was, was written, and the building inspector um, informally didn't see an issue with it because of the lot line that was going to be adjusted. That lot line um, does not impact any. Other any setbacks or change in existing conditions of setbacks that nobody did not They essentially didn't see the need for a parent or any people for multiple parents to be required with this. <clears throat> but they still, um, staff still recommends that the applicant confirm with the building inspector's office directly. Is that the same for number seven as well? Or is this, uh, that, that's for area that can Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I so is this what it is right now? This is what they want to move green and then that's what it'll be. I think it's the green, but I think the green is the area she has changed. So that's essentially the policy parcel. Is that, that yeah, should be merged with the northern parcel and grows away okay. from the bottom parcel. Okay. There's another yeah. thing on the right side that kind of gives you the existing past parcel subdivision and then subdivision upon completion of Mercury. And I have my should go. Well, we should have conclusion. So, uh, 
essentially we're reviewing this for step point time. And then upon receipt, they're addressing some of the staff comments and additional items requested. The applicant to move to formal final plan submission. No, this was this was the yeah, this was the third meeting with a lot of chance how to have it address it, you know, at application time. Sure. I was gonna yeah. offer what was said to me from the staff. Yep. Again, the colleague that meeting done. Um and you, the reading of the conclusion was correct. We did have an internal uh, discussion that this could potentially, um, depending on the, the planning board's determination mm -hmm. and consideration, that uh, because this uh, proposal is fairly straightforward and limited to a very small area and a slight exchange, that potentially it could be seen as a preliminary final um, tonight. But given that um, that breaks precedent and, um, and it kind of slightly aberrates from our code. Um, it would be up to the determination of the planning board. Um, but our standard procedures is for this to go through sketch plan and then come back for a preliminary final. Um, we have, I don't have it at my fingertips, but in the past, there was one other um, application where the the city attorney um, made a determination that the application could move directly to preliminary final in in the very first meeting and initial review by the planning board. Um, so the the conclusion um, within the staff report, as you stated, leads true, um, and I would like to say it's up to the planning board's discretion. So. I guess when we get to application, it'd be there's a number of notes which we can do with the applicant and we, we do with staff to determine whether if these items are satisfying. Sure. Is, okay. Yeah. Discuss it. Yeah. And um, that checklist was created upon initial intake of, of the application. For the application to be more fully complete to end to bring it to the board. So, as far as I want to make it clear to the board, there is documentation here that I believe needs to be clarified to pick a direction. There's a recommendation that says one thing, sort of says another thing. Some questions that are raised here where I don't see the information necessarily in the packets to determine if this has been answered. So I just want to make sure that we clarify this in our whatever direction. You said, and would you identify any negative aspect of doing the sketch and file tonight? Um, I. I don't think it would harm this review, um, but I hope, you know, I always like to move forward with my own caution of, um, you know, not trying to speed up the process any further than absolutely necessary. And I think it's, it's good for the board to, you know, uphold the sketch review, um, but at the same time, this is essentially a lot line adjustment is a very minor subdivision. Um, and as we're moving forward, we're considering with the zoning update right now, um, creating a more administrative review process for applications like this so to save the applicant time and kind of the minor review process. So from that, I mean, it, it's a double-edged sword. So yes and no. Um, I think it's continuing to to provide time for a thorough review, um, but everything is on balance. So it's but specific to this application. You don't. No. In the mid sense, before we get through questions that are outstanding, resolved, and we have the record that identifies it. I think that's the key. This is the board feels to be able to check here. This is how we addressed it. 
you know, we have some staff recommendations. And this is how we address it. And, you know, we need an extra staff to get this in right. And you know, at least the board recognizes that and right, make our determination for it. Any other questions for the first application? Got a weird one. This is the first one that I've seen that it mentioned uh, being at a project site or any portion of it is in an area that known as an archaeological site or a Chicago or an archaeological site in Victoria. You see that call B. The checklist, I don't know if that was a mistake or not. Um, well, the environmental assessment yeah, the environmental assessment fact. And it's either on or adjacent to an archaeological site. Which page are you on? Uh, page two or three. I'm not sure if that was safe or not. Um, so this, yeah, yeah, this was filled out by the yeah. Okay. Um, so part ones are always filled out by the applicants. Yeah. Um, but so I think, but. If the board determines or agrees that this would be a type two um, action, then you wouldn't have to go on to completing a part two of the environmental assessment form. So right. essentially, part one is moved. Okay. Um, so I think before you get to reviewing all the answers within the environmental assessment form, we kind of talked about has been. Maybe a fact of whether or not you would agree with this would be that required that it's minor than it would be correct. Yeah. It's like two seeker, and within um, the updated um, PRR um, section 617.5, C16, um, it, it pretty explicitly states within the part two list. Um, of um, actions that lot line adjustment experiences and other, I don't have that list with you directly, um, but other minor amendments to the lot all within the type two list. Yeah. Okay. But that, that's a very good question. So you can be on your packet. <laughs> Do you have any other questions on the first application? If not, we will have a second to them. Not a big thing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So, do you want me to jump in? Yeah, okay. yeah. So the second application is for um, let me give a check title: Two Property Management LLC, the App Subdivision 2024. So back in February, the board did re review this as a preliminary sketch. Proposed subdivision along with a preliminary sketch site plan. Um, the site plan is not coming forward to you tonight, um, but it is expected to come back at potentially at our next meeting. Um, tonight's focus will be just on the subdivision proposal as a preliminary final in response to the previous conditions for the sketch plan resolution. Um, and um, all in all, um, this, this, this proposed uh, plan is a two sheet plan um, with two, again, it, it's a minor, um, a proposed minor subdivision and essentially another uh, lot line adjustment. Uh, we're involving parcels 
207.17-5-2, which is owned by the Zukowski Management LLC. And then uh, um, Ed Zukowski is here with us this evening. And then to uh, parcel 221.5-4-1.2, which is owned by First West LLC. And Shirley O'Connell, I believe, is here with us this evening as well. Um, and the the parcel that will be created by the shift, the shift of the southerly lot line um, for tax map parcel 207.17-5-2, the Zukowski parcel, um, to the south will create a new parcel of approximately 0.165 acres to be exchanged um, and directly merged with the Zukowski from Northern Council. Um, and the, the background on this is to create um, better conformity with the existing um, integrated structure um, on the side of the lot line so that they can further develop that property um, as proposed in, in the site plan proposal that have been being reviewed in the center. Before we get too far, I think I remember in the packet two months ago that Shirley O'Connell gave written authorization for someone else to represent. I don't remember if it was Ed. I don't have the, uh, the packet, but she did submit an affidavit. Right, Mark, she gave the authorization for Mark McAbee to represent her and Mark to show up for the So, okay. Just one of them. Thank you. Yes, and that's correct. And we did check all of those authorizations. Board. Yeah, this this recommendation is for preliminary. Yeah. February for the last meeting. Correct. Uh, not the last meeting, but the February. The February. The last. Meeting. Oh, the last. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And um, if you're looking at your staff report, you'll see that there are even fewer staff comments with this phase of the review. Um, the first comment noting that this has been being reviewed in terms of the site plan. Um, and there is a note to that the applicant should provide written verification of the required setbacks for the subdivision application and that the site and application is informed of the verification. So the, I just, while we have this comment in place, I also want to just remind the board that the subdivision application, the two, the two applications should be viewed as standalone applications, even though they affect the same Lot that the Zukowski Management LLC owns, and the, this application, um, the proposal was prepared by a license plan surveyor. Um, so, in staff review, we had realized that the setbacks on the two different proposals were reflected slightly differently. Um, so, we just have this comment here for posterity to ensure that. Um, the applicant ensures that all of the current setback information is included on the zone table. But we expect that that should be true and correct because those licenses are there for purpose. Um, the next comment is to provide, again, provide the same zone data to be all information for the existing open space for parcel 221.5 dash 4 dash 1.2. So the Post open space and which had previously been missing from 
the zoning table um, and still has not been added. Um, that information is provided, um, but we recommend that it just be in the table as so there can be an easy and full comparison of the, whether or not the clemency the criteria for zoning requirements. Um, and then number two, um, it's recommended that the applicant have the following information to any subdivision that presented for final review. Um, and no, this is something that easily gets missed on a regular basis. So it's just a reminder that a note that all private on site sanitation and water supply facilities sh shall be designed to meet the minimum specifications of the state and county department of health. And then the rest is um, recommendation for each group. So it's now six o'clock. If there's any other further questions, that we kind of do here. Alicia, are we set with the system? Okay. Then I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the planning board meeting for Monday, April 22nd, 2024, 6 p.m. We can all rise for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get a roll call, please. Jim Abdallah? Yes. Rick Perry? Yes. Abby Musinger? Yes. Tom Coxer? Yes. Carly Newman? Yes. Thank you. So we do have uh, two applications today. The Planning Board Application 24 06, Planning Board Application 24 01. So we'll start with the first application, 24 06. Uh, so 24 06 of uh, the subdivision for the Ducat Revocable Trust subdivision 24 approximately located at 18 Georgia Street. The request is to subdivide a 10,586 square foot, approximate square foot improved parcel, which is um, I'm current with the tech map parcel 221.7-5-11.1 into two parcels, creating a new 2,301 square foot approximate parcel to be merged with tech map Parcel number 221.7-5-7, we're retaining 8,284 square feet. The location, again, is George, 18 George Street. The two parcels are zoned R2. The owner of tax map parcel 221.7-5-11.1 is Robert and Tech Revocable Trust, and the other parcel 221.7-5-7 is the Ducat Brothers construction company both being represented and plans prepared by Jeffrey Burns, who is here with us this evening. Okay. Um, here's an overview of uh, the existing two parcel configuration currently. Um, George Street on the south, Walworth Street runs north and south um, along the two western frontages. Again, they're both zoned R2. Here is the George Street frontage for the 18 George Street and Pack Not Parcel 221.7 5 11.1. And then the Western frontage for Parcel 221.7 5 7, and um, a little bit of, of the other lot you'll see to the right. Um, and then just to help. Um, better to fix what is proposed to be transferred. Um, staff drew in um, did a, a slight overlay of the existing and proposed boundary lines and the boundary line to be essentially dissolved. 
with the impact and this is not survey grade by any means that the impact area to be merged um just to give a, a little bit better of a depiction but um, again mr Burns provided an updated depiction that i think should also help the board um and then here's the objective a copy of the subdivision plan and um it's got the full copy right here uh, existing lot one here with which contains the two family dwelling and then um, proposed lot two the other parcel up here which is more of a rectangle that contains four different buildings and, and potentially an accessory for the shed small shed um, and have various setbacks um, existing setbacks that should be shaded with them but the focus is really this slot line here, the shared lot line, and this proposed lot line. The proposed lot line that we show in the direct at best to going back to the presentation. The only thing I'd like to add oh. is in your explanation, perfect. But where the proposed lot line is, is where there is an existing chain link fence that separates the actions of the construction, construction versus the residential property. So that proposed lot line is placed on an existing chain link fence that separates this use from this. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Is, there's a line tied there, and that's what makes that proposed line tight tough to see. But there's a fence line on. You do the, you have that? Yeah, it's just, just okay. Okay, good. Um, so and then um, very similar to the depiction that Mr. Bruce provided everyone this evening. Um, this overview shows the existing lots as they stand today. The configuration. This the blue area is the area to be essentially subdivided from lot one and provided to lot two to be merged. And then this would be the new resulting configuration of the two lots. Uh, and just quickly a summary of the, the comments. There was no departmental review comments that were received. Um, the subdivision classification is recommended to be a minor subdivision. The speaker classification is recommended to be a two, um, a take two action for six NYCRR 617.5 C16, which explicitly called out uh, a job. Lot line adjustments. Um, and then staff comments, um, and which would be a recommendation to the planning board, is to ensure that the zoning data is updated to reflect all setbacks along Sanders Street. Um, and the recommended conditions are that this be a merger with the northern, the newly created parcel be directly merged with the northern parcel and that the uh, inclusion uh, with the final pick and when the uh, final pad acceptance is determined that the tax credit fee verification um, be completed with the city chamberlain's office and satisfaction of all other departmental staff comments. And that's at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Mr. Burns here to how you doing? Add or clarify. I think everything is is been answered. Uh, as far as the front yard setbacks on Standish Street, we do show the the existing residential single family dwelling is my eyes are really bad. So I'm must keep it the big size. Is it <laughs> five point one or six point five point? Five point one. So that's the, that's the front yard set back there on Stan Street for that closest the residence. 
again, so you know, so the pre existing non conforming deal that uh, uh, this subdivision is, is for this merger is doesn't like to draw any, any attention to that. Um, and so when you ask the front yard setback, do you want me to actually show what the current setback is, or do you want me to dimension like I did the building to this road Um, I think just up, uh, ensuring that the zoning table is updated. Should so you like to see another column for that tax part for seven? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's not a separate tax part. That's not a separate parcel, though, is it? Tax part for seven. Is an existing tax parcel? No, no, no. The house isn't, but the tax. Oh, oh the, 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 the tax taxable property. Tax. Yes. I didn't know if that's what you meant or the five point one dimension. That's how I read it. Was just showing what the existing building was relative to that front yard or relative to that street boundary. Um, I think well, so the minimum rear setback. Uh, I think the proposed is. It, it's called out as 46 feet, um, and staff wasn't in, in, entirely sure where the 46 feet was coming from. And even though it's kind of two front yards, we just were asking for a great, also a greater clarification on whether or not this 5.1 feet would be also considered a setback or and or how how it would be included in the the existing data table. So just better, I would say better incorporating the 5.1, the existing 5.1, and providing verification to the proposed um, 46 foot rear setback for proposed lot two. Yeah, you could easily put five point seven in place of that six that sixteen nine. Sixteen nine showed for the frontage on the wall of this the closest set back to the wall of the street road damage. Okay. And since this frontage of the lot we're taking was on wall work out for the drop the wall. But the fact that there's two fronts, we can certainly derive the net yeah. and stop that. There's there's a lot going on. Um, and so it, it's just for the staff comment was more for clarity sake versus whether you know a proposed request to go to variance. So currently, it's staff comment four and it like staff comment five. You definitely don't feel the need. Issue work. Well, you tell them them because I don't have I don't have the comments with me, but I'm certain I don't have problems with the staff. But yeah, it's just the big thing that I'll the it. setbacks. It's basically what we just talked about. Yeah, after yeah. After yeah. After yeah. After and then, yeah, there's no problem. I'll certainly update that table to show that setback on Standish. I was going to say one setback on Standish for five point one. Right, and then the sixteen point nine. Yeah, it's set back. Well, that was Walworth. That and that, that the fact that this lot was coming from Walworth, I was really just looking at Walworth. I didn't even consider that eastern portion of that. You have to so. And then it says uh, it's recommended the applicant to pick the forty six foot rear rear setback on flat for parcel twenty two dot seven dash five dash seven, as this setback is not identifiable. That's I think the only one. It is, is. And, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm guessing the answer, and I don't know for certain. I have to speak to the draftsman, but I think that they did. They can mention the the single tax. So this parcel is just to give you some chronology. Tax parcel seven is made up of three pieces of title. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's now one lot was at one portion in time three lots. So the boundary line, actually you see a dash line that cuts basically north-south through that metal building and connects to the northwest corner of that tax parcel eight. That was the rear lots. That was the rear lot line for the three parcels. 
So I'm guessing that that's what the, the dimension is from the, the single family dwelling to that former lot line, but certainly, I guess my question would be, what would be the rear lot line for this property? And that's, that's not a determination that we So this lot seven, like you indicated, is made up of three different instruments. So mm -hmm. portions of tile, portions of title, mm -hmm. but those are converged for taxation purposes. We can only assume that you that we've run into this before, where this yes. is a question. Well, and again, we talked about precedent earlier. You know. Precedent for the current board is precedent. As long as the subdivision ordinance has been in place, it's really kind of different. Um, but yeah, if I, this would be considered, in my opinion, a pretty minor change. You know, anything relative to questions relative to zoning, relative to setbacks, have nothing to do with the line we're creating. No deficiency has anything to do with the line we're creating. Um, I have no problem itemizing block to make Co's office and planning department happy. Um, I really want to achieve final approval tonight. The reason is Michelle Lucas Duke is the executrix slash trustee for both properties. They have a buyer in place for the residential property. So they're under contract for that now. They're in negotiation for the other portions or the uh, Duke Brothers construction portion of the land for a separate buyer. So while I'm handcuffed and have to come back to another meeting, I certainly will. But I hope this is that this would be something that would be achievable so that that contract and these, you know, these can be done. As far as the, as far as the, the tax, the existing tax process, house tax, the reality is, is the dates of these deeds are from the 60s. How it was merged. Was it, you know, was it done through a merge form at the county level? Was it done? Uh, I'm certain it wasn't done at a uh, planning review process, but it was, it's taxed that way and has been taxed that way for decades. So how it came merged, I don't really know the answer, but I know that they are merged. It says it's what was the deed dated that created the merge lots? Well, that's what I'm getting at. So there's not a necessarily a title filing for merging lots. That's something that would kind of evolve to two separate instruments. One three two, separate instruments. Well, no, two separate actions is what I'm saying. The the action of merging lots for taxation purposes is different than the action creating lots for the assemblance of deeded parcels. So it's from the seven. Seven. What we got six. Six. Yeah. Yeah. 67 and then 71. Yeah. Do they, yeah. Those are those identify the separate deeds, correct? Right. Okay. At what point did the deed identify all three contributors? Never has. Never has. So today they are separate yes. deeded parcels. So no, they, they're separate portions of title that make one tax parcel. Okay. But the deed reflects what? When you say the deed, the deed, uh, the tax deed parcel deed. isn't necessarily associated to a deed. It, it, it shouldn't be. 
because no, that's, I think they're separate. Time to make it. No, no, they're separate. They're separate actions. Completely separate actions. When when an assessor takes an emergency for taxation purposes, he's not necessarily assembling deeds. He's not at all assembling deeds. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. He does so, have, have to be done with one of two ways. So it's either a split merge form at the county level or it's a done in title. It has not been done in title, so we can only assume that there was a split merge form in the last 40 years. Okay, that's that's an assumption that we're making. It's stacked that way. It's stacked. But back then, the county didn't do that. It was done in the city assessor's office. I was this in 73 the time it's done it that way, since 1973. Well, merge forms. They, they are the tax map maps right there, um, the assessments are done but those really the merge forms have a process where they go to the chamber they, they, that's all part of that split merge form process so it's not just the county saying okay we're going to merge this it's under the purview of the city's guidance okay yeah i guess i'm not making my point my, my point being there's an instrument that that identifies the parcel of the land or these separate parcels of land. Have these parcels ever been identified as a single block of land? Yes, right okay. now on tax maps. On tax maps, but on title and deed, we don't have anything in our possession that identifies. No. Correct. Okay. That's the, that's the question. I will tell you though that this legal description is going to incorporate this slot two. And it's going to describe those portions of title that are described in the 1967 deed, uh, 498, 450, 498, 447, and 542, 294. That will be one continuous description. So I think once we achieve this, there will be a title document that describes that in one continuous detail. So it won't be made of separate. Mike. Then it brings about another curiosity question. Will the actions of this board uh, in this new lot creation, the document that identifies the parcel of land, are, are we tonight authorizing this be identified as a single parcel of land in title or in the? Well, you don't make the call in title. That's right. But okay. our actions so, may very well do that. That's the that's, intent. That's what the merge application is for. Okay. That's why we, we asked for the merge as well, and not just the subcommittee. So, 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 so if I'm reading this right, because on one of the photos that you had, okay. you showed where the proposed lot is is going. Essentially, the lot line adjustment is to Bring into reality what's already being used, right? Exactly. So there's a partial driveway there. It's associated with business, but really it's on the, the southern lot. So we're bringing into the tax map what is the reality kind of practice. Yeah, yeah, and the land use. So that way these two parcels can be sold. That's nice one. Yeah, right. Yeah. So there's half a driveway in lot one, two, excuse me, that then will get merged in. With the greater business property line there. And it already adjusts to an existing chain of press. That's in, in practice. And the intent is for the larger lot that this is that this parcel is going to get merged onto, all of those structures, all that land gets sold, essentially it's not getting broken up further into okay. those four. Okay. So when you go to Merge this that merge this new piece of land mm -hmm. into the lot seven. You need to create a new piece mm -hmm. for the whole combined. Absolutely. And that would be final. Yes, the final completion of the sale. You need, you need, I guess there's the case that somebody back out. And then have to wait for a new buyer, but yes. Did you not create the needs of it regardless of the sale? No, 
if you if you you have this document prepared and let's say I'm the buyer and at the last minute we don't agree on a price, well, then you don't have someone to convey it to. You don't have to wait till you get the buyer to convey it. You wouldn't convey a deed just arbitrarily in preparation for it to be there to convey. You wouldn't take the legal piece twice for no reason to wait until there's a, a grantee for it to be paid. So it's part of construction of title. If the only thing I'd qualify you is so it would it, be a little bit of, so there would be a lot to the description that closes a continuous shape that describes the 2000 square foot coming from the title of the, the revocable trust to be merged with lands of Robert and Duquette Construction Company, making the continuous description of and it would be one continuous description of all of that. Two different parties. So someone who's going to get lot two to the fortune of D in 2022, together with all of the three deeds that are listed under seven, it will be one continuous description. I I'm going to disagree with you because if you have a deed that describes a piece of land, you have the development rights to that portion of land that's described within the deed. I've had this argument with this board before. Well, let me tell you, I was the one that used to sign this permit, as you know, mm -hmm. um, and it was agreed by the city engineer who oversaw the planning process, George Miller. Now, unless things have changed where your deed description gives you the allowance to develop to the degree of your, your compliance, your degree of compliance, okay? When I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the overlay. I'm looking at three separate parcels. And the lines are, are clear on, on this drawing mm -hmm. that it was used in function as a single parcel, which there are multiple features within this single parcel that say they they did it and they did it probably because of a tax map that identified one single parcel. You're you're right about that. I don't disagree with that. I can tell you right here across the street actually. Across the street from uh, Wall Street, Messick owns land on George Street, on the north side of George Street. Oh, yeah. Where he has a single tax parcel made up of multiple deeds. Mm -hmm. And he tried to sell one of those deeds. He had to go to the subdivision approval and not sell a portion of his tax parcel, even though it was a separate deed. He could not. He had to get a subdivision approval. That's based on the assumption of how it's taxed. So when we say assumption, it's not just a, a blanket assumption. That's how, how it's taxed. It's yeah. taxed as one part. Um, well, the the development, the title can't give you any development right outside of the purview of what your ordinance. Is. So it does identify the leaps and bounds of every individual parcel. Right. And that's and that's what you technically should be building toward that deed description. That's what this is going to do. Absolutely, it will do it. But before it's created, there's three deeds that identify the composition of this site. Once it's done, you now have four principal use structures that are going to be on that single parcel. Mm -hmm. You're now going to have a through parcel going from Walworth to Standish Street. You're going to have seven. You do, but you don't have a deed. It's you're not just right. I won't do you don't you do you so know, most of the farms, the farms in, in, in the counties. No, let's, let's, do, the, let's do the city. Let's do the city, then we'll go to Messick. Okay. We'll go to Messick across the street. Okay. It, well, you can go to any any lot in the French Quarter that was identified as 33 feet. 
At one time, you may have bought two of those parcels, but because your friend was in the assessor's office, he gave you the taxation leniency of creating one single parcel. Okay? I would have no idea. I, well, I, I lived through those days, so I do know. These, these allowances were granted, but then when the determination came down, I had deeded separate parcels. What is my legal entitlement for development? Legal entitlement was for each parcel that you had deeded. That is your lot description. And whether that was assembled for taxation purposes or not, your lot description is still within the deed. And if you had the right to develop a vacant lot because of a deed, you can't get it right through a deed, the building right through a deed. You can't. Are we getting ahead of ourselves yeah. a little bit here for what this is? This is a small lot line adjustment, right? For well, uh, here's my here. point. But he's not, I'm not trying to build on this lot. So the point it. is, if that deed identifies a single parcel, then sure. what we're doing is saying that any of the um, previously previous actions are now going to become legal because of the assemblance into a single deed. Well, we don't say that they're legal. We said they're pre-existing on form. Well, because you have a current the, non the non conformance is that they don't comply with their deed. They don't comply with current zoning. I guess I'm wondering if that is the purview of the planning board. That sounds like it has to go through the the zoning department, and I agree that those are probably good for the outside. I don't expect the the for the attorneys in the advance of the deeds. But that's so probably outside of our. I guess that's all this board is reviewing is the right. 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 No, but the action of the board is going to create new leaps and bounds for this particular parcel. When you made that creation, then you're there for giving all other. Non-conformities within this newly created single parcel. Well, this board is not. They would have to still go before the zoning board. If I'm reading the staff for that. The staff. For the truth, we're asking the applicant get that determination of the right right for this ordinance. Yeah, that's where it's a little bit of a question in terms of time. Right, and that can happen before the final plan review. Well. Keep in mind, we, we as a board are considering whether we step over that. The opposite is okay. actually asking for that. <laughs> okay, we consider this final tonight. Got it. But in this discussion here, we all need to be clear on what. Yeah, okay. We're considering. Yeah. And I only added that, you know, you know. <laughs> I can tell you, I'm, Paul, I'm to sorry. you, I'm Paul, to you, Jim, and your, your history here at this board is, has functioned. Um, I don't want the, the result of a board determination to, to grant that, uh, that grandfathered status because we now have three separate deeds, regardless of what the tax map says. Tax map is done by the mapper. The mapper obviously didn't read the deeds and because the deeds would have identified a single parcel. Today, those three deeds identify for taxation purposes, three separate lots. But the way that the property is taxed, that is gonna be what the tax parcel is what's under the, the, the purview of the ordinance. Not the individual piece of tile, but the tax parcel. Yeah, they're, they're, they're. But it's really moot because what you want, we're going to achieve. What is the alternative? That we show three different types of parcels, three different lots. No, you do. You already show. Well, they're showing show right here. They're showing a they're formal right title. They're, they're a former title. You're showing a, a taxation 
lot description that in, incorporates three separate parcels. Right. That's now, the, the action of this board is going to allow you to create a single lot line, a single description, and a single name. That's what I'm saying is what's troubling me. And it may not be the same trouble that any, anybody else has. I guess I don't know what the alternative is. What, what would you rather see? You know, would you rather see the, the I would flag get smarter with just an individual piece of title? There's a, <clears throat> there was a reason that this was done in the 70s. I don't know what that reason is. That's they got to be sort of digital chronology. So they started out with the uh, obtaining title in uh, the, the portion on the western half. And then they got uh, also where the single family dwelling is. And then years later, I think it's 71, is when they got that northeast portion. So as they obtained more land, they merged in with the existing tax parcel. Now, you're right. I can't tell you that there was a split merge form filed in 1977. I, you know, I don't know. I don't even know if there's a database that would let me find that. I can't. Um, but I can tell you that if I tried to sell the single family dwelling, which is existing on its own separate deed, I could not sell that without achieving a subdivision approval here. I think you could. I've argued it and was unsuccessful on this, a, mess, this board. Yeah. And had to, had to go through a subdivision approval for that. And actually, there's a lot of adjustment from. The way things were occupied between Platteville and Nessa. So you probably couldn't achieve that because the county did not recognize it as a, as a tax party. It's actually Kevin, I think, that wanted me to who mandated it. The, uh, but, but in the end, of the, the court did the flow of the paper. Right. You would not be able to get a recognized tax designation. From, right. From you know, you wouldn't be able to get that in tax IDs. Right. And without that ID, you know, the sale would be. And there's certainly a question about when it was done, who was the tax mapper at the time, who was the assessor at the time. But I can tell you that when I go out, shouldn't you know, the CIMI tax parcel, CIMI is the current ownership, uh, notarized. You know, the, the current owner, and then there's tax searches done on the various pieces of title, and it goes to the chamber to ensure that the taxes have been met for those, and then the tax map merges. So there's not a title document that gets filed. There's that, that mm -hmm. county process. And I say county process, this is a tax map process. Um, and I'm sure you're right. I'm sure there's been. Eaves and clothes as to how it's been done in the last 50 years. Yeah. Um, but the reality is, is this description, like I, I, in my opinion, adding a contiguous description doesn't cause any issue. One is that we're not proposing anything, everything is there. So it's pre existing. Current zoning is, is what? What is the date of our current zoning? Yeah. Uh, 95. So, you know, all of these structures predate 95. Um, so, I really think the, the, the description. So, what is the alternative? The alternative is to, you know, acknowledge that there's there's deficiencies if this were recognized indeed by a single person. And I named a couple, you know, there's the number of principal structures within the lot. They're here, they exist, they've been recognized by another government agency, which is the real property office of, of the county. They've recognized it and all we're doing is I think your assessor is recognized as well. Your your assessor not an assessor today. The, the city yeah. assessor, the person who collects taxes, county. Is not, so the chamberlain just says that they're paid, and the county handles it all. Correct. Yeah. So he's, 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 he's 
Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Um, so to answer your question the way I see it, um, we are formalizing the creation of this single parcel mm -hmm. in any deficiencies that go with it, including non-conforming uh, features within the parcel. And maybe it's time that that be done. I'm not saying you know, and I understand your concern, but but I think what you have to recognize is that you have a situation here where you have buildings over the title, old former mm -hmm. title lines. So you're not creating a, a situation where you could be allowing something. You're actually creating a document that says this is why it's allowed. Formalizes it. Exactly. Right. That's, which is good in my opinion. It, it's good because it cleans up the mess. Right. Okay, we're just yeah. the right. And, and we're putting it into one single parcel. I would favor that. Um, but it, I think it needed to be noted. And before I could even favor it, I think we You're fine. Yeah, we need to have this discussion. Just, when I react, it might not be good. It might be because I don't understand what you yeah. know it's not necessarily. Yeah. Do you know if the buyers are intending to do it the property? The buyer for the, I've only been told of the buyer for the, the residential duplex. Oh, they're keeping the, they're keeping the duplex. So there's just going to be a new lamp. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought that they were selling both properties. Well, they are. I don't know about the discussion for the construction. I don't know where that stands. I know that they have a buyer in place for the residential duplex. They're in talks with, I think, a few other parties about the, the construction company. Mm -hmm. I mean, any, any, if, if those buildings were demoed and there was a new building, and they would have to conform. So there would be no grandfather bid. Yeah. Not conforming. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. Covered a lot of territory here. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> So ultimately, in the end, your request is that it was be redescribed or into a single key. Jeff already said he was doing that. He's going to identify this newly created lot as a single parcel as described within the deed. Okay, so that's a fourth. That's going to be the fourth parcel that encompasses the one. He's going to make it one parcel. I mean, yeah, the only danger that I would give you with the thinking of it as fourth parcel is that that subdivision is based on the merger. So, so it's not, it's a portion of one piece of title merged with three existing pieces of title that make one mark. And I will describe. Lot two is a continuous piece being, you know, the 2301.18 square feet coming from the title of instrument number 2022-323-340 merged with the three pieces of title that make up seven. Then I'll carry it through with one continuous description. So there'll be a couple of descriptions in that beat instrument, but the final description will be one continuous description of all the lands. Uh, I guess get back to staff comments. Sure. There's discussion about getting written determination from the building inspector on area, uh, potential area, potential interferences. Question. Uh, there was, it's not any. Yeah, and in this case, I want to make sure that we get it in writing. Mm -hmm. It's something that goes with the with the file. It's, it wasn't the discussion. It's in writing. Um, so I think 
pretty sure there were no other review comments from other city departments per se. Yeah. Obviously, the condition of merger. Piece of property. Lot seven. Mm -hmm. City chamber with its confirmation of taxes. Yes, it was the last condition. Um, I just wanted to remind you of comments for the five of the clarification. We've got that. Well. Right, that's something to discuss with you about a combination of setbacks. Okay. Um, I guess the next question is. The board's feeling in terms of this, you know, the applicants made a request. Do we have to clarify some of the staff and the recommendation against what their draft of the region says? What staff feeling about again taking this sketch plan directly to the one that I Just a, a point of clarification. Um, If we don't, um, the building inspectors' comments or compliance uh, statement um, would be part of the record versus we would make it contingent, make the approval contingent that we, we get the comments and that the charge be applied. I to the map. Is that accurate? So I guess the, the real question comes up is do we get a condition to prove what you're bad and the building inspector comes back and determines that variance is required in a more efficient one? Then the that condition's not met. <laughs> correct. It's it's a then it's yeah now. Then the process starts all over. Well, we well, start well, all over. But it would be like we could go then to the zoning board and try to achieve what we need to and then come back to you for detail. But yeah, I mean, the, the reality is the, the building inspector's office did look at this. You did show the okay. So I, mean, I don't okay. expect that they're going to come back now after they've already come with you at once. I don't think they're going to. No, and that's why I asked the question the way I did. Yeah. So, uh, I know that they, they did offer some, some input. I haven't gotten any of that input in writing, so I can't really speak on it, but I, I didn't know just from listening to you that, that there has been communication between the community development office and the building inspectors office. So I can only assume that if there was a need for a variance, it would have been brought up by them. Correct. That's my own question. Well, it's, yeah. So, take it to, without further comment, or do they generally agree with looking at this as a sketch from the map? Better if I have to make this monitor so different from the media style and stuff. Does that mean we're going to get done tonight? Oh, that's, that's, that's what we're looking at. Sounds good. Okay, so we also considered this a type two super action. Everybody in agreement with that based on staff's review. Okay, so no further action is required for the secret. Let's just. And because it was brought up earlier, this archaeological site that was stated as answered as yes, what is that supposed to be? It's an automatic answer. So the, the, <laughs> the uh, seekers, seekers kind of evolved. So it's an online submittal, fill it out, and then the state actually answers. Some of the questions they on actually that. itemize it. I think on the back page as to what those answers are that they don't tell you why. 
Uh, for instance, like I know that it was a remediation, and I had to do some digging to find out the remediation number was actually due to that Nessic property when it was a right. uh, move. Right. And we did we did itemize those. Yeah, I don't have any. I mean, I was the one who brought it up in the pre meeting. I don't have any other questions about it. I guess since there's not going to be any development there. I guess making you aware that it was selected. So if it was something that you automatically put in in the secret form from New York State, uh, you know, I guess for somebody in the future, some sort of future. I don't know. The reality is at that point, they should have come back very odd places relative to, you know, and a quarter of a mile kind of thing. And the truth is, I think yeah. anything in that. District that historical district, there's probably going to come back with something. Sure, yeah. but like you said, I I'm not real interested in what it is because we're not doing anything. Exactly. I guess uh, the only point to bring it up was that uh, was it a mistake, A, and if not, uh, it was what they answered. Be aware for any future development right. of that property if you're going to be building condos. All right, I'm glad they answered so, it. So, or I would have answered it differently. Yeah, all right. Sorry for bringing it up. Because they, <laughs> they use the same answer for is this wetlands? Yeah. Or other regulated water bodies? And yeah, just, yes, is that so the yeah, it's really So what this question is is actually not the buildable site, but it's the uh, more of a district district kind right. of question. Exactly. Okay. That makes total sense. It could even be plaster bay that's triggering that. Sure. Um, they, you know, it's, it's going to be something like that. Yeah. So. yeah. So, actually, one last question I have in this. I don't even necessarily question this per se, but I just want staff to clarify it so the record is clean. Uh, it says applicants still need to provide evidence that Michelle Lee got to fix the executive executive of Robert and his local trust and authorized signer as trustee of the Good Brothers Construction. That has been provided. Okay, so we have an affidavit, but you have whatever record you were looking for. Yes, we okay. have that on the um, and that, um, so it was in the legal. Uh, charming for us, but um, basically, it's sort of appointment as the executive, executive of the trust. Um, and then also a, a, a double choice of a will. So that I can't remember the name. So one was like a trustee document, the other was a uh, executive. Yeah, we appreciate both of those. Um, I bring them up. I, I just want to recognize that staff can satisfy that. Yeah. Um, and those are part of the electronic. Just one other comment. Uh, Barb, do you have a copy of this map so we can get out to us before? You want me to look at it? Do you have a copy? Did you receive a copy of this? Just a minute. Do you have a copy of that for the record then? Yes. Okay. That the all three of them yes. Yep. Okay. Um any other comment from the board? Uh, if not, we do have a public hearing associated with this uh, application. So I would move to open the public hearing. Are there any comments? Okay. Nothing being heard, I'll need to close the public hearing. And <laughs> satisfied speaker, type of action. And actually, I believe it's addressed in the draft resolution as well, recognizing that. Um, applicants have generally responded to comments, and then we do have a number of conditions <laughs> that they are willing to satisfy part of the application. And then we have a draft resolution uh, 24.06, I believe it is, for consideration. So, um, with that draft resolution, I just want to point out uh, um, 
page two of the top, it spells out the general subdivision that and for the correct presentation and the kind like we told the story for the approval it should be sketch preliminary. And then again, down at the it should be sketch to sketch preliminary. Just for clarification. So, do I have a motion to be specific on the conditions for a motion for the draft resolution with our conditions? I don't know that I can bring up all the comments we brought up previously. <laughs> so I don't I know that I want to take the first crack at that. Same. Then I provide no my problem. understanding of what I heard and the, the board can confirm and restate if they agree. Um, it sounded to me like the board was in agreement to accept all of the staff funds as recommended conditions. Of approval. Um, so those are conditions one through ten. Um, and then it sounded to me also that there was one additional condition proposed that would have been proposed by Rick Perry, which was um, along the lines of acknowledging, um, I don't have these personal numbers, that proposed, we'll say, acknowledging that proposed. Um, lot two, um, if all of the um, previous included lots within that configuration are accepted, that this would propose or create deficiencies that would be created um, if accepting the proposed lot two, and that um, I don't, I don't, am I going to do lot too far? Yeah, Maybe I'm, you can restate it better. I'm just kind of trying yeah. to backtrack through my notes. Mm -hmm. But you, go ahead. You might well, be able to state it better. In, in, I'm not going to state, restate it in terms of a, a motion, but essentially what uh, what I had said is that we, we recognize that the parcel had previous non-conforming status that the recognition of the lot assemblance um, by a single need um, will no longer carry the, um, I don't want to say it like that. I, I would actually say that making one D clarifies the encroachments that exist based on title maps. That's a better way to place it. So what we're doing is rectifying these encroachment sites that serve our title boundaries because we're going to make one title. Yeah. The, the encroachments of, just to explain that, the encroachments of the title boundary are the deficiencies as described within each individual parcel's deed. That's where the through lots come come from, and the multiple structures on a single parcel. You want all of that information? No, but but can remember how Jeff stated it. <laughs> it incorporate and continuous the truth. Yeah. To incorporate in the words words. One can see you with speed is really your items, staff comments one through ten, <laughs> and that one additional comment. Yes, to incorporate one can see you with speed description for proposed lot two. Well, for tax parcel seven, for proposed lot seven, or <laughs> tax parcel seven, yeah. Proposed lot seven. The new proposed new 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 new
Okay. I just want to remind the board that within the proposed subdivision plot, there is no depiction of a proposed lot seven. Yeah, but we need tax parcel seven. Yeah. So the continuous description of the max parcel, it, it'll be set. It'll be existing, yeah. existing back parcel seven merged with lot to merge into. Describe right in your current map. Yes, that blue is going to have a description of this. The last map there that has shows upon completion of the mergers, that'll have a continuous title description to the same description. So it's just not the merger message. That is become a problem. Okay. So no one else has anything to add. I think we've got general conditions outlined and a draft of the resolution. I'll make a motion to uh, uh, pass the draft resolution uh, 24-06, incorporate staff comments 1 to 10, and also incorporate the description for one contiguous D description for the merger, merger of Lot two into tax parcel seven. I second that motion. Second. Um, There's no any further discussion. If not, roll call. Jim Abdal? Yes. Rick Perry? Yes. Abby Mazur? Yes. Tom Foster? Yes. And Carly Berry? Yes. Thank you. 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 Okay. Second uh, application tonight is planning board application 24 01. Uh, 24 01 proposes application title of the housing management LLC subdivision 24. The housing division is attempting to ask the council to subdivide a 4.08 acre unimproved parcel, uh, which corresponds to tax out parcel 221.5-4-1-2 into two parcels, creating a new 0.17 acre parcel to be merged with tax out parcel 217-5-2 and retaining 3.91 acres at 3 Ave. The location again is at City Avenue um, and approximately at uh, the 1014 City of Ave, which is south of their parcel, which is south of that address. Um, the zone, zoning for these two parcels is R2. The owners are here with us tonight. Um, we have Ed Zukowski for Sparks Rep LLC and Shirley O'Connell for Zukowski. Excuse me. Um, I put those. <laughs> we have Shirley O'Connell here at the evening for Terrace West LLC, the tax on personal 221.5 dashboard 1.2, and Ed Zukowski for Zukowski Management LLC. Um, though the plan for her is, um, is representing them, and that is Mark McAfee for zero point six stock. Um, and uh, just a reminder that this was uh, reviewed as a sketch plan proposal um, for the 24th February meeting. Um, here are the two properties again, the two tax tax parcels within the school area. And there's one R2. This is the frontage or the, the, the um, 
for the kind of fortune that we have, which is the property management owns. And um, this is a, a rough depiction um, with a street view of the two parts. Two properties on um, the, the apartment area and the shared boundary line. Um, so, the middle section is um, the proposed area to be exchanged, which is currently owned by um, Terrace Rock LLC and the Cracknock Personal 221 4 4 so the boundary line, the shared boundary line, which is shown slightly to the top. Um, this is a view of the vacant parcel owned by Terrace LLC, and the parking to the southern southern area of the Dukowski Management LLC Park property. And then this is an overview of the proposed of the vision plan. Um, so this this shows the Dukowski Management LLC property, the existing building, and then the existing southern lot line, and then the proposed lot line, and then this is a slightly better depiction um, showing again showing the existing structure on the Dukowski <coughs> property to the left, the area to be subdivided. Um, from the parcel to the south, and then merged with the building property. property. Um, the department review comments were that there were no concerns regarding subdivision by higher DPW environmental services or uh, LMB. A previous comment from the 911 office for addressing was that the property to the north, the address. Um, as 14 um, PD Avenue versus um, 10 to 14. So um, those comments will play out further with the site plan review process. Um, and per the building inspector's office, uh, very inputs had, were achieved um, at the April 15th the, um, zoning board of appeals meeting, and there were no other department review comments. Um, Provided for for this um, page of the review. Staff comments are that for the zoning data to ensure that the correct uh, existing checkbacks are accurately depicted and including included in the zoning table. Um, again, um, noting that a license plan land surveyor has um, has created this and provided their stamp signature. So. Um, this should be enough confirmation, but we did want to um, indicate to um, recommend that that confirmation be made. And then um, additional recommended recommendations for conditions are that the the newly created lot is directly merged with the northern parcel. Um, and again, that the tax currency ver verification is completed with the city chamberlain's office to make sure there are no back taxes or new loan properties and then um again satisfaction with the property department so fairly straightforward that all have this presentation but i'm happy to bring up and so um, as part of changes the last time i did update this on the table I was using a different um, zoning table and it gets into uh, I can't remember the exact but the different levels. So I used the correct one on that and I made the changes in that. Yeah. Yeah, I got the formula for the side yard. Um, I take that and then add the electric and then um, that's it. So yeah, you, you do have that as an open comment, like staff comment number one and the zoning table working through them on a couple of a couple of questions, maybe. Okay. Um, adding a note 
Uh, and number two, we've added no about on site sanitation and water supply facilities. We don't know if we've added to the map. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right there. Number three, common is that we conditionalize to rule on any other city department comments, which it sounds like we don't have any at this point. Comment number four is a condition about merging the small parcel into two parcel five dash two. So, I think that's going to be a conversation on the plan about merger. Yeah, I added that note there to be merged to the merge. That I can parcel before we had it on G2, but I added it on the C1 as well. And the attorneys are going to, I mean, I'm going to write a new description, including that whole parcel. It's not really going to be merged. It's going to be that parcel is going to have its own description. And then number five is. Uh, Standard recommendation about the city, city channel with the sign off. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? The board? Okay. If uh, we have no further questions, do you have any other things? No. Okay. Thank you. With no other questions, uh, we do have a public hearing associated with this uh, project. I'll move to open public hearing for any comments. With no comments being heard, we'll close the public hearing. Um, again, this is a type two action, minor subdivision. We did a minor subdivision back in February. Um, we do have a draft resolution 24-01A. Which essentially looks at approval of the preliminary plan presented with obviously the staff's uh, staff conditions for staff houses. I can make a motion um, to accept the preliminary plan resolution 24 01. Um, is that incorporates the conditions of the staff Yeah. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. Any further discussion? Roll call. Jim McDowell? Yes. Jim Carey? Yes. Abby Meeserger? Yes. Tom Cosgrove? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Have a couple other business items on the agenda. Uh, I guess that is update my staff. Is that an update? Um, I think that I think that was supposed to be donating updates. Um, so just the the process for um the donating update. We just had a. Um, Public workshop last week on the topic of moving forward as swiftly as possible while incorporating as much public comment and opportunities for public engagement as possible. Um, and we're in line to um, have proposed draft drafts in form by um, the end of June and are on target to hopefully have. A full um, proposed document, the zoning document, document by August. Do you remember the date of our next public workshop? Our, we haven't set a firm date for the next public workshop, but it's targeted for the end of May, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then we do have a tax meeting tomorrow night. If you, if anyone on the board hasn't had a chance to see the workshop on like Zoom or attend, I would definitely like, encourage. There's a lot of different information 
proposals to be seen. You know, if there's an open comment period at the end after presentation. So. Well, we, once it's all done, uh, when we get like that presentation, how do you think we should be making the update? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I would expect that we'll be providing the uh, There's going to be, they'll be in the final presentation. Uh, that would be a private of the council, the post adoption to the council. Yeah. Um, and leading up to that, we will have so our fourth public workshop we're targeting for the end of May. But once we start putting all of this to draft documentation, I think more is like the planning oh, the board members so that we know what change. Yeah, I would encourage you to get involved now yeah. and start reviewing some of the documents. Um, I if you want, I can have an internal discussion and see if we could formulate a presentation direct for the planning board. Um, and otherwise, we encourage you to watch and you know, attend participate in the next public workshop. Mm -hmm. The next <laughs> workshop. The whole thing is that you know, final in August. Yes. Right. And then it'll go over to city council. When? Then it would start the the proposed adoption process. And how long? I'm just wondering, like, is, is there an election at the end of the year? There is. Okay, so, like, yeah, it, is that I mean, be, I, like... ideally, we would like to have it fully adopted before right. the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And we should have enough time if all goes well. Um, and we've been trying to incorporate the council um, in, in the entire process. I think that they are fully aware of the proposed changes. Um, and we've had several council members attempt every workshop to date and then also provided a uh, uh, presentation to directly to council two weeks ago. So we feel like we're trying to keep them fully along the way as, as well. Um, so hopefully once we get to the final proposal and the adoption phase, hopefully there will be no questions left on the table um, and council will fully understand the proposals and um, hopefully we will be able to get it done all as well. But that will all remain to be seen because it is a public process and, and it can take our the shape of the sometimes. Are the workshops recorded and posted? Um, the, they are, yes, they are recorded and posted. Um, I have to double check on this last one if we can post it. Sorry. But um, we do have a project page. I think I've mentioned it to you, but it's been a while. Um, so we've got the My City of Plattsburgh public engagement platform. And within that, it is a project page for Smart Code Plattsburgh. Um, and that has all as much background information as we could pro provide and um, as much detailed information to help the public follow along in the process and see where we're at. Uh, but, so the workshops are posted as well. Uh, yes. Yeah. So there's meeting minutes for PAC meetings and the recordings and notes from the public workshops along the right hand side. And then when there's an announcement um, or a survey, like an announcement that the next public hearing or a survey for the public to fill out, um, that's typically posted at the top of the page. And then the middle of the page is the background. And then the bottom of the page you can read additional surveys or um, and, and following along in the phase of the project. The project timeline. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. What's going on? Um, so that that is like the main status update I think that we have right now. Um, and then um, other items of business. It's just to I think Barb brought the um, bylaw and all platforms this time. Thank you. Yeah, for um, all members yeah. to. Um, and the bylaws were shared out approximately 
two months ago. Couple months ago. Yeah. Yes. Via email. Um, so um, the board should have those and have that time to them. Um, Thanks, Thank you. 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 Discussion originated in the February meeting with the Duke House Key site plan review. Um, and how, how great it was that it, that was creating um, ADA to make, was proposing to create ADA to accessible housing and uh, uh, re, um, adaptive reuse. Adaptive reuse of the structure. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, and that it was in high importance with the like, adopted and comprehensive plan. Um, and the, the proposal was that we find a way to celebrate um, and give thanks to applicants that the putting the effort to do those good projects, right? Um, so, and then last planning board meeting, um, we provided a staff update that um, that idea was brought back to the community development office team meeting, staff team meeting, and discussed. And we, the whole team, has their thinking caps on and how we, how we can create something. So um, we haven't arrived at any conclusions just yet, <laughs> and we may need to revisit the topic. I mean, when when you look at developers, you know. They, they come through the regulatory process and then there's nothing but enforcement. You know, yeah. you go through building codes, enforcement. You go through fire codes, enforcement. Yeah. Everything that's, all communications are on the enforcement side. I think it's good to bring a positive aura to projects. And when you look at some of the things that the Zakowskis have done, Look at the 4K house across from the train station. You know, they took an abandoned warehouse and they made it, you know, a beautiful complex out of that. And we see pockets of these projects all over the place. We just not recognize and embrace the efforts of developers. And I think it's important that we stand up and say, Good job, you know. We're proud to have the work in our city. But I'm not going with that. No. I know. I haven't brought it up to so be involved. Like, all this morning. Chargers? To what extent am I allowed this great suggestion for that? They're a fourth member. So yeah, but I don't know. I guess I'm asking if that like within our round. Um, I would I would look to how how much it conforms or aligns with comprehensive plan and other guiding documents. Yeah, um, it's more like it's really about tearing up like concrete and getting the transformers checked. Might go do it now. Yeah, I think it's. We, you can include it as a recommendation to the applicant that they look into it. Um, and I mean, we provide information on tax credits for yeah. historic uh, properties. Yeah, um, if you're a knowledgeable person on it, you said yeah. to them, I know how to get 75% of that paid for by SERDA or something. 
sure. Especially with their ADA it. accessible yeah. dwelling, it would probably get a lot of the, the infrastructure costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're saying, and by I think the way, you could hire my firm to do it, that's probably a different story. <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> then I point you to the bylaws. <laughs> yeah, I work in a nonprofit that does it for free. <laughs> so, last item here is uh, talking about creation of a hard copy planning board reference binder. Yes. So, um, the reference documents, the, the base documents for planning board to kind of rely on um, were shared out again. Two, two months ago, um, which the bylaws were part of that set of documents. And um, we've had discussions here and there about the um, the usefulness of having a hard copy binder of all of those documents um, before we delve into printing all of them because it's a lot of paper. We just wanted to check with you all and confirm that, um, you know, check, confirm upon everybody who would like such a binder. Um basically take a scan. Um I think you could share some. Were you saying that they would bring them to the meeting? You want to bring them out of the meeting? Well, so the if if we did, if each individual board member um, got their own binder, they could either live in our office or you would carry them with you. Mm -hmm. Um but that way, for instance, you know, when the discussion came up this evening mm -hmm. yeah. with the Duke Pat subdivision, everybody could have jumped into, you know, their binders and I don't know how much paper. It could be. Yeah. I mean, I don't I haven't typed it out myself. But yeah, I have that already. probably yeah. something like that. So maybe if there's because this has subdivision zoning that arrays down the table as reference documents you can grab and kind of share. Yeah. And they sit here. Yeah. And they would go yeah. forever, I right? Mean, Longevity wise. I mean it wouldn't just be this right or it would be passed along so it would be until changes are made to certain mm -hmm. documents yeah like what i could check one out take it home or do a little light reading on the weekend yeah absolutely or i mean they could be it could be configured a couple different ways but the way i almost see it is every board has their own sign binder yeah. and you can either leave it in our office or have it travel with you if you if it travels with you it's your responsibility yeah, you that. to bring it to the <laughs> you want to have it in the plane board you have to bring it um, if it's in our office we'll just we'll bring it down the night of the planning board um so but, and that way we have it city's not working to do a visual on it well and that could, that's another conversation so that and you could look at that as well. Um, it just won't be in the media future. And I think it's tough too when you start looking at like who's around on your phone and your scope. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, it's, it's hard, hard to dig in yeah. the zero yeah. down on a, on a device with people in. Like, yeah. I'm really, right. I'm looking this up and I'm right. And I'm thinking yeah. about it and I'm like, I'm Google Maps, so I want to just be at that end. Yeah. So I had a minimum of my own address in the first book when I first came on the board. They gave me a copy of this morning ordinance and they had actually a copy of these historic guidelines. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else had these, but yeah. No. no, but I mean, I think having a copy or two that are on the table that you could bring down just for the meetings, we need to do something and have, we, like you said, you've got electronic versions that you can view and cans of you if you want to outside of this or check it out. Take one. I don't feel like I need a full copy. If you'd like us to all have one, it's a board chair. It's happy to do it. It's good to have a But honestly, I mean, honestly, you just come to the same almost every meeting. Yeah. Same. Like, I'm not going to bring my confirm things. So, I don't even know where you, I don't even know if you can find this historic buildings yeah. uh, publication on the city's website. I don't know if that's there. You may have to search it in the uh, Secretary, I, you, Secretary I, of State. Yeah, I don't know that we have it listed on our website. We have several copies, actually, copies upstairs. Um, yeah, with the changes coming. So there could be stuff that's going on at the store that's not going to be coming to the store. 
I some things you're going to be able to build too at the board's office. So well, it sounds like both of the reviews we did tonight are going to be considered lot line adjustments in the future. Yeah, those and those be, would not come before the board. Correct. Those could yeah. be administrative reviews. So you do not. I mean, if I want to rent out a those historic books, if we're not even being needing to refer to them yeah. as often. Yeah, so it makes sense to table it till that's been they been adopted and then the next I agree with that. I, I would think you know I don't want to this of new yeah, yeah I mean, we, it all goes well maybe the zoning update will be adopted by November. Hopefully. Um, so if you're comfortable waiting that long, that's okay. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.